Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Pedrio in a 15 plus 2 game on leechess.org. Pedrio is rated 1887. I'm opening with e4. And, hmm. You know what? Let's play a King's Gambit. I've had some requests for this, and I'm fulfilling them now. <laughs> Gambit upon on move 2. Let's do it. My student Justin, this one's for you. I know you will be very happy upon seeing this video. Let's hope I don't make this a complete disaster. Okay, so after black takes the pawn, white can play either knight f3 or bishop c4. Those are the main moves. I'm going to play bishop c4 just to stop black from playing d5. I know that a quick d5 in the king's gambit accepted can be an effective antidote for black. So my opponent does check. Let's play king f1. This is usually the best square for the king. So I am taking a risk in part because of my opponent's rating. I did get paired with someone on the lower end of the rating range I was searching for. I thought I was searching for 1,900 plus players, but it must have been 1,800 plus. Hope everyone's having a good weekend, or is having a good Monday if you're watching this early in the week. It is about 5 o'clock p.m. U.S. Central Time. I've just been taking it easy today. I watched the Minnesota Vikings lose their fourth consecutive game. So that was a bit of a disappointment here for people in my state of Minnesota, but not unexpected. They started out the season 5-0 and and have proceeded to lose their uh, last four games. <laughs> I trust everyone has been watching the World Chess Championships so far between Magnus Carlsen and Sergei Karyakin in New York. It hasn't been the most exciting match so far. They've played two games. Both games have been drawn. I don't feel bad about saying that because I'm sure everyone has learned of the results so far. But if I spoiled it for anyone, I do apologize. So knight c6, I think I'm going to take over the center either with d4 or maybe knight f3 to start. Knight f3 will win a tempo on the black queen, but maybe I should play d4 first. Not sure there's a huge difference. If knight f3, queen e7, black would be threatening this pawn. So I might be inclined to play knight c3. Hmm. Let's play d4 first. I'm going to hold off on knight f3 just to see how black develops. I figure I always have this move. And now my bishop on c1 is pointing out the pawn on f4. So perhaps that could take away an option for black like queen h5. If I had played knight f3 on the previous move, queen h5 would be acceptable without losing the f4 pawn. So compared to the queen's gambit, the king's gambit is much riskier because you're opening your king. Hence the name. So when on move two, white plays f4, we're, we're touching the forget about it pawn. We're moving the forget about it pawn, and we're exposing ourselves along this diagonal. Whereas with the queen's gambit, it's more low risk. The queen's gambit is not even a real gambit because you can get the pawn back very quickly if you so desire. But the king's gambit has always had a slightly dubious reputation. Or a fully dubious reputation. There's a famous game where Spassky beat Fisher in the King's Gambit, and Fisher was so incensed by this loss that he proceeded to write an article explaining why the King's Gambit was busted and how exactly he intended to refute it, and he provided his analysis and such, I think involving a quick g5 supporting the pawn on f4. So far so good, though, in this game. I think I've accomplished my goal of making things complicated, making my opponent think out of the opening, so knight f6, attacking the pawn on e4. Again, I could play knight f3, but maybe I will hold off on this for one more move. I'm thinking knight c3. Although then knight g4 would threaten mate on f2 and possibly some knight e3 ideas. Also knight takes h2, so maybe I should play knight f3 first. Yeah, let's go ahead and play knight f3. Also in the spirit of playing quickly. I'd like to stay ahead on the clock in this game. Back to the World Chess Championship for a second. Uh, a couple of people have asked me why I haven't been covering it. I still may do some analysis videos of the games or even do a stream if I have the time, but I've been extremely busy the last few days, and I expect that to continue through the end of the month. And also, I 
I'm just looking forward to enjoying this world championship as a spectator too. You know, it started off slowly. I don't think it's captured the attention of many hardcore chess fans yet fully just because the games have been a little dull, especially game two, where Karyakin didn't really demonstrate much as white. Uh, although admittedly, at the beginning of these world chess championships, it's often about feeling out the opponent. Okay, here I think I'm going to play knight c3 and just defend the pawn on e4. Don't think I want to play bishop takes f4 yet because of knight takes. So knight c3 seems to make sense. I don't really see how black is going to prevent me from winning the pawn back. So yeah, let's just go ahead and do this. But the World Chess Championship is very much like a high-profile boxing match. You've got two competitors that have trained exclusively for each other for many, many months. Hundreds of hours of preparation time has gone into it. Very rarely, it seems, does a high-profile contest like that just result in uh, one side going for the throat just uh, right off the bat, at least in chess. So you can expect, even for a couple more games, I think, that the players will be feeling each other out, not opposed to draws. If your preparation backfires as white and you don't get much of an advantage, uh, these guys are so good they can always, almost always bail out with a draw, just kill the position if they want. That's just the nature of high-level chess. A well-played chess game will end in a draw. I don't think there's too many people who dispute that. And at the highest level, that's, that's what you see. Okay, bishop e7. So I have these beautiful pawns in the center. I can try to advance one, but I can also just regain this pawn. So my candidate moves here are e5, bishop takes f4, and maybe d5 or even knight b5, I'm thinking, to attack this pawn. But if knight b5, bishop d8 is going to cover, I don't know if I gain much out of that. If d5, I think knight e5 is an acceptable reply. So bishop takes f4 is currently leading. If e5, probably just knight g4. Yeah, and that knight is irritating. It would I the e3 square. So let's just take this opportunity to get the pawn back. Bishop takes f4. My central structure is still great. I have good minor piece play. My problem is my king, which has had to move by virtue of black checking it on the third move. Against lower-rated players, you can take more risks in the opening, as I was explaining before. Um, I played this in part because of my opponent's lower rating, and that's not a sign of disrespect to my opponent, but that's just an acknowledgement that I can recover from you know, a suboptimal line if necessary. And also, I wanted to try something new. I've had grandmasters do this to me before, especially when I was lower than I am. I noticed they would often play lines that they would not play against a fellow grandmaster because they just know that I don't have the skill set to properly punish them. So that happens at all levels of chess. So d6, sensible move by black. I think that g4 square is important. I feel like black is itching to put a piece there. If I could castle right now, I'd love to do that. <laughs> just bring my rook to f1 and put my king on g1, but of course that's not happening. h3 comes to mind. The thing is, though, h3 doesn't actually prevent black from putting a piece on g4, like bishop g4, because my rook on h1 is undefended. I can't take here. So other moves I'm thinking about, maybe queen d3. Getting out of any potential pin here, especially if black does sink that bishop in on g4. It'll also allow for the rook to come over to e1. So I kind of like the look of that. My bishop on c4, which is an undefended piece, will be protected. King f2 trying to castle by hand is nice, nice in theory, but black will play knight g4 check if ever I do that. So I do feel like I need a queen move, and I think I'm going to play queen d3. Yeah, let's play that way. Knight b4 could harass my queen, but I just back it up to d2, and black's knight is just flapping in the wind on b4. There's been a ton of coverage on the World Chess Championship, by the way, from a number of YouTubers and streamers. I see Chess Network is doing full-length streams just from beginning to end 
on his Twitch channel, and he's also posting recaps afterwards. And Chess Network always does a good job with his videos, so you could certainly check those out. Chess24 is doing live coverage. I think I saw Eric Hansen and uh, Robin von Kampen paired together doing coverage. And I heard that Peter Svidler and maybe Jan Gustafsson are also going to get involved too. So they could be in the pipeline. Chess.com always has great post-game coverage. Danny Wrench has been posting his own recaps. Christoph Selecki, Chess Explained. All these guys do excellent work, in my opinion. So Black Castles. Now, do I pull the rook over to e1? Or do I play h3 now, maybe with an eye towards playing king f2 then? Because now that my rooks are connected on the back rank, assuming the king moves, that's more of a viable plan. But still, if h3, that doesn't stop bishop g4 if black wants to play that move. So I feel like I almost need one more preparatory move. Again, king f2 immediately is not going to cut it, though. I don't think I'm in a great position to push in the center now, especially that black is castled. So I would just like to consolidate my position. If you play the king's gambit, you're probably thinking, like, what are you talking about, John? Why would you consolidate your position in this type of opening? <laughs> but it's true. I think I do need some, some way to connect my rooks together. h3 almost works, but if not for bishop g4. So I'm trying to find some workaround for that. Or maybe some justification for playing h3 all the same. Now I'm questioning whether I should have put my queen on d3 because bringing the bishop back to e2 could be nice. Not the end of the world, though. What about knight e2 here? Does it ever make sense to swing the knight over to g3? Seems slow. I don't like it so much. King g1, maybe with rook f1 in mind. King g1 would actually threaten to play h3. But what would I do after that? Hard to say. Hmm. Let's say I play h3 and black does play bishop g4. Well, I was thinking knight d2, but maybe knight b4 is a problem in that case. Yeah, that could be an issue. What to do? Rook e1, bishop g4, knight e2, or knight d2 rather. It's possible. Yeah, let's go with that. Can't ruminate. Just got to go with something. Too early in the game for that. So rook e1. I feel like it's helpful to have the rook close to the king, and if ever I do play e5, it's going to come with more punch. My hope is that after bishop g4, knight d2, that black's bishop doesn't have much to do on g4. It will have forced my knight away. Ah, but you know what? I just committed the same mistake that I made a moment ago in calculating a variation. I forgot that after bishop g4, knight d2, black has knight b4. And I even mentioned that line. Mm. That's an instructive oversight. Sometimes you'll calculate a line, and you'll get so distracted calculating other stuff that you forget the point of some variation that you already analyzed. You'll forget the conclusion. And my conclusion is that knight d2 is not playable because of this knight b4 move, threatening the queen and the pawn. So that means if bishop g4 is played, I'll have to come up with some other idea. Maybe I'll have to revert to, say, knight e2, trying to go to g3, and also trying to overprotect d4. You might panic if you make a mistake like that, especially if you're waiting for your opponent's reply and you're just despairing, like, oh no, I missed such and such detail in my calculations. But as much as possible, you got to keep a level head and tell yourself that the game will continue. Sometimes you'll blunder catastrophically and you'll be sitting there waiting for your opponent to reply and 
it's just torture. Like, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but that was an oversight that I think I can recover from. Like, the fact that I can't play knight d2 after bishop g4 is not going to kill me. So I'm planning my backup idea, which I think is going to be knight e2. So bishop g4, knight e2, bishop takes f3, let's say. I think even queen takes f3 is okay. So black plays bishop e6, interesting. So that is goading me into playing d5, which at first sight looks like it's going to win a piece, but black will reply with knight b4. I'll have to move my queen, so let's say queen back to d2. Then black is likely going to move that bishop again. Let's say bishop g4. And maybe black's argument is that my pieces are blocked by the d5 pawn. My structure is less flexible. I can understand that argument. Maybe here I should play a3. That will threaten d5. But maybe black will play d5 himself. Well, I think after a bunch of trades, I can play c4 and perhaps claim some initiative there. I don't want to take on e6. I feel like after f takes e, the rook on f8 is going to be bearing down on my king. I don't like the look of that. d5, knight b4. I also don't like the look of that. So yeah, let's play a3. We're going to play a solid move, I hope. Threaten d5. So if black plays d5 now, then I will take, let's say, knight takes. Knight takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, queen takes. And then at the very end of that line, I think I'll play c4, followed by d5 if possible. Okay, so black didn't bite on that. He just decides to take on c4. This way I get to maintain my pawn center. I didn't have to move one pawn in front of the other when I wasn't prepared to do so. I think the fact that I got rid of black's light square bishops mean my, means my king will be a bit safer than it was before. I no longer have to worry about this move. So I am pleased with that minor development. I think the main move that black should be shooting for here is d5 in some way. But no, he plays knight d7. My first thought here is, can I utilize the d5 square now that black's knight is not on, not on f6 covering it? So knight d5. Also, what about a move like queen d5 or queen b5? Offering a queen trade, attacking b7. I'm just thinking of all the flack I'm going to get in the comments if I trade queens and the king's gambit accepted. <laughs> So that's maybe not a good idea. I mean, objectively, it might be decent. So if I think it's good, I'm going to play it. I could play d5 here, entice this knight to move, and then go after c7, but uh, I'm not sure I fully trust that. I mean, my king is still a question mark here. I'd like to get my rooks coordinated. Thing is, queen d5 or queen b5 might actually be a pretty good idea. Like queen d5, let's say. Black doesn't have to trade queens, though, do they? They could play queen g4. Keep the queens on the board. I think just h3 is acceptable here. Or even king f2 if I like. Black's plan might be knight b6, and if my queen goes back to d3, let's say, then f5. I could see black charging forward the f pawn. Hmm, hmm, hmm. H3, idea g4. But it's slow. H3, knight b6 is going to hit my queen. Hmm. If I want to trade queens, queen b5, I think, is the way to go about it. 
And then after the swap, I'll gain a tempo because I'm attacking c7. Maybe I can expand further, move like c4 then. Uh, still not convinced. Okay, let's play h3. We're going to keep more tension in the position. I'm down to 3 minutes and 41 seconds. This is a 15 plus 2 game. I've got the 2 second increment, but let's play faster. So one plan I have is g4 and then put the king on either g2 or f2. I'm trying to take away some territory from that black queen. If knight b6, I'm even thinking about queen b3 or queen a2 to stop f5. My fear is that the queen will be out of play over there. So maybe now is an appropriate time to play queen b5. Could be. Offer the trade, but still. Do I want to do that? If queen d3, f5 looks like good counterplay for black. So that's why I'm sort of shying away from that continuation. Hmm. Yeah, let's do this one. So offer the trade. If f5 now, I think I can play g4. And then, of course, f takes g4, we'll lose the queen on h5. So that's a trap that black could fall into. Plays queen g6, okay. Certainly possible. Now what about g4? Discouraging f5. Yeah, let's do it. And he very quickly plays a6. Okay, so here I could play queen f5 if I want. And try to induce a trade where I would get like a really big pawn clamp. Kind of like the look of that. Also, queen d3 comes to mind. Pull the queen back. I'm a little vulnerable on the f-file, however. Queen d3 here. I can always play bishop g3 if necessary. Or bishop c1 even. Or bishop g5. Yeah, let's do this. So queen d3. So next, I think I'll play king f2 or king g2. Probably king f2, actually. King g2 might run into h5, so let's do this. Finally connect those rooks together. Black has played some sensible moves over the course of the last, I don't know, seven, eight moves. I like my position because I have more space with my pawns along the fourth rank. They do control a lot of territory. But lots of play remains. And I'd like to use this space advantage, start crawling forward somehow. But that partly depends on what black does here. I've restricted the f5 break. He might still go for h5. If h5, I'm thinking of shifting my focus to the king side. So playing a move like rook eg1, trying to line up with his queen and his king on the g file. I like my queen on d3 right now, stopping knight c4. I feel like these two knights are not doing as much as they could be doing in the position. Black needs space. And he needs an avenue for counterplay, so I wouldn't be surprised to see a move like h5. If something like knight a5, looking to come into c4, I think I can play b3 pretty comfortably. Just deny that possibility. So what will my next move be if black just maintains the status quo and plays some, let's say some sort of move like h6? 
So I don't think I'm in a great position to advance any of these pawns yet. I don't see a good reason to. Maybe d5, but even that move. Okay, now, now that the rook is no longer defending the bishop, I wonder if knight d5 is a good move. Because if knight takes d5, pawn takes d5, queen takes d3, I take here. I have tripled pawns, but black will lose a piece because I'll be attacking these guys. So this might be a good shot. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I think this is a well-timed jump to the center, attacking c7. So that's my main threat, knight takes c7. And if he has to, has to play rook d7 or rook c8, black is feeling uncomfortable. Also gives me the option knight takes b6 if I'd like to damage his structure. This might have some implications as far as trying to trap black's queen. If I can ever eliminate this bishop, then knight h4 becomes a possibility. I can't play that move right now because the bishop is eyeing that square. But it becomes possible. Yeah, rook d7 played. Okay. Maybe bishop g3. Although now black actually is threatening to play uh, knight takes d5. Now that the bishop is defended. So I might need to play knight takes b6 here or a move like c4. c4 looks pretty cramping. Maybe I should play that move. Gain a little space. Ah, what about this maneuver too? Knight here to f5. That looks attractive, doesn't it? But he can play maybe d5 if I play that idea. Yeah, let's play c4. I'm going to go with this one with my 49 seconds on the clock. That was looking nice, but I wasn't sure how to respond to d5. So gain some space. Rook over, okay. Maybe bishop g3. Yeah, let's pull this guy back. I'm thinking knight f4 could be a useful idea to threaten. Maybe I could have considered knight e3 to f5 there too. Okay, so we get black to take. We take back. Now where is he going to put that knight? d8 or b8? Goes to d8. Mm-hmm. Black is extremely cramped. No doubt. I'm going to go rook over here. Let's just see how black unwinds. Might play c6. Mm, I'm not sure this was a great move, but I'm trying to take some measure against this move being played. h5. Also, maybe I'm preparing this. Tuck the king away on h1. I would strongly consider c6 if I were black. So I'm thinking maybe queen b3 in that case. Getting out of this situation on the diagonal. Yeah, he does play that. Let's play here. So black might trade on d5, and after I take with the queen, play the knight back to c6. But that's okay. I think my queen has a nice perch on d5. Let's pre move that move. How else can black free himself? That's about all I see. Taking and then trying to get the knight to either e6 or c6. His rooks are ineffective at the moment, just sitting on d7 and e8. 
Maybe he'll think about moving this rook to c7, because after a trade, he could try to play rook c2, but I always have a prophylactic move like rook e2 if necessary. Hate to see both our clocks so low. It's par for the course for me. <laughs> Bishop f8. Okay, attacking that pawn. Aha. Uh -huh. I think I'm going to take here. Let's see how he defends. If, queen, if knight takes, I think queen d5. I'm going to play all the same. If pawn takes, then I might have to play a little differently. Yeah, so let's go here. So supporting that pawn in a kind of a weird-looking way. This is still an idea for me. Knight h4 to f5. Hmm. Okay, let's go over here. Going to offer a trade of queens. Still have my nice center, but how much is it really worth now? That's debatable. Let's bring this back. Now it would make sense for both of us to try to occupy the C file. H4, H5 is an idea I'm considering. Let's do that. Just cover the E4 pawn. Bishop takes D6. Could have played that on the previous move, but he would have Rook takes E4. Okay, let's go h4, push. Might play knight f4 check. Although his rook is looking a little precarious there, isn't it? Gotta play a move, Pedrio. Go e5. Yeah, and I won on time. Oh, that's a shame. Hate to see the game end that way. Bad time management on my part. My opponent just played too slow at the end, too. So, let me see if I can go to the analysis board without this displaying the computer analysis yet. There is a way to do that, but I, I don't know what that is yet. But before I dive into the computer analysis, so I was able to get a nice center out of the opening in this one. I achieved the e4 and d4 pawn center, and I got the pawn back on f4. But it didn't seem to me like I was able to capitalize on any advantage after that. Black played some good moves. And I fiddled around in thinking about bishop g4, whether black would do that or not. I made a slight miscalculation with rook e1, because if black had played bishop g4, and I went knight d2, there was that knight b4 trick. Hmm. So this was a key moment because of uh, d5 being possible. You know what? I'm going to go back here because I really don't like seeing the arrows and such before I've had a chance to do this on my own. I don't remember how to get to the board without... Uh... It's just annoying that the, the computer analysis like immediately loads when you hit analysis board. <laughs> I wish there was a way I could avoid... Uh that somehow I think there is I just don't know it okay so let's discuss on this board for a second because it just immediately clouds your thought process when you see what the computer thinks is the best move yeah so if black had played bishop g4 here I would have had to come up with some other way of playing the position because my intended knight d2 runs into knight b4 attacking the queen in the pawn so that wasn't working out for me I played a3 here. Arguably, this move is slow. I was trying to stop knight b4 in like every case, but I'm not sure about it. So I have the center, but in reply or in return, black can claim that my king is always a liability, just sitting on f1, blocking the rook from getting into the action. Legitimately, it takes me at least two, three moves to solve that problem, like playing king f2, rook here, king back to g1. And I can't even really play king f2 yet due to the knight g4 reply. So I didn't quite figure out a way around that. 
And a lot of this was played already in time pressure. I feel like after knight d5, I don't think rook d8 was a good move by black at all. Because after knight d5, they're forced to play some super defensive move due to the knight takes d5, e takes d5, queen takes d3, c takes d3 tactic. Where I've got the triple isolated pawns, but black is going to lose a piece because c6 and e7 are under fire. Maybe I have to try knight e3 to f5 in some form here. I didn't have hardly any time to figure it out though. Knight e3 I thought might be met by d5 with counterplay against my center. So I shied away from that one. Maybe I can do it on the next move, though. Right after black played rook e8, perhaps this was the time to go knight e3. Looking for knight f5, because now I'm overprotecting d5. Although, is that actually the case? Knight e3, black might still be able to play d5 here. Because c takes d5, knight takes d5. Note that I cannot take with my e-pawn, because my queen is hanging. No pawn on c2 protecting the queen. So... Yeah, I was already way low on time at this point. I mean, rook g1, uh, that was sort of a move directed against h5, but I played better moves in my chess career than rook g1, I think. <laughs> I really don't like my play in this phase of the game. I was actually having to defend against some threats. Even right at the end, when black got in the check, he was reluctant to play knight f4, but knight f4 check is almost certainly the thing to do here. Yeah, now black lost on time, which... Uh, was unfortunate. So in my analysis, I'm going to focus on the opening for one thing because I don't really know how to play this King's Gambit. And I'll also focus on, I think, the early middle game, right around here. I mean, all phases of the game are important, but I feel like if I'm going to play this position better, it probably is somewhere right around this moment. Especially, I'm especially curious about this position because rookie one was sort of a half-hearted move that I made just in the interest of time. I'm not really sure what the best approach is here. h3 is the move that calls to me, but it doesn't stop bishop g4. Okay, so let's click over to the analysis board now. Okay, so you can see that f4 on move 2 gets the dubious mark by the Lee Chess analysis engine. <laughs> and not for good reason. I think the King's Gambit accepted is dubious. But that doesn't mean you can't play it. It's still fun. Oh, thank you, ASYM. Glad you liked the videos. So check king f1. And the other move, as I mentioned here, the other main move is knight f3. Let's just click into the opening explorer for a second, just so you can see. So knight f3 is more popular, but I've had a couple students who have told me they really enjoy playing bishop c4, so I thought I'd give it a whirl. Let's follow the opening book, though. So bishop c4, yeah, queen h4 check is one of the main moves. White does have to inconvenience their king slightly. And what a black now play? Knight c6, which is the fourth most common move here. You can see that white scores pretty well, though. I guess we might have to switch databases. I uh, wonder which database this is. Let's go to the master's database. Yeah, much more accurate as far as... The objective value of these lines, you're getting the master level games. So that, that shrunk the number of games because we're no longer on the Lee Chess database. But, and you can see the corresponding drop in the win percentages for white. Yeah, so most popular move here, d6. d5 also played. Black might not mind giving back a pawn in order to speed up his development. So d5, try to get him to take. And then play knight f6. I don't think knight c6 should be a terrible move, though. The only thing is it doesn't impede me from playing d4, which I did. d4 should be fine. Knight f6. Okay, knight here, and we're out of the database already. Black has only played d6 in this position. Okay. Let's turn on that analysis module. So here, I play knight f3, gain the tempo on the queen. Black correctly, I think, plays queen h5. I play knight c3, guarding e4, bishop e7. Hmm. So maybe I missed some more direct way to play this position. I got the pawn back, bishop takes f4, but e5 is strong here. Okay, knight g4. Somehow I felt that this was going to be an issue for me, but looking at it again, yeah, can't I just play bishop takes f4 even if I... Even if knight d5 is stronger here. 
And maybe I was worried about putting one of these pawns in front of the other prematurely, but maybe the knight is just unstable enough that uh, this is a, a huge problem for black. I see that that knight d5 move the computer is suggesting is even stronger, though. Ah, because I have this idea in mind. Right, okay, so I'm not just threatening knight takes c7, I'm also threatening to take on f4 with the knight. Hmm, I gotta keep that idea in mind in this opening. Yeah, e5 does look pretty good in hindsight. So I played bishop takes f4, question mark, d6, and now queen d3 trying to involve my rook on a1, but yeah, h3 is a better move. But what if just bishop g4? Then bishop back to e2. Okay, this is one thing I mentioned when I put the queen on d3, that I was stopping the bishop from reaching the e2 square. I can see why that, that's helpful to white, though. That's a good way to break the pin, and if black ever plays bishop takes f3, I do not have to take with my g-pawn, which might expose my king further. I can take with a bishop. That's the whole point of that operation. So queen d3, black castles... I play rook e1, and I do think he should have played bishop g4 here. Which creates this threat. I think it is a threat, because if I take with my queen, then we swap queens and black wins d4. After bishop takes f3, I guess I could take with a pawn, but that at the very least allows queen h3 check. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Yeah, black has good play here. So bishop e6, as my opponent played, not so good. Play that cautious a3 move, but d5 is strong here, huh? Knight b4, queen d2, bishop g4, knight d4, and maybe black experiences issues with this knight. Engine claims a clear advantage for white, roughly half a pawn, a little bit more. Yeah, I think I, I was hurt by my reluct reluctance to advance one of these pawns. I wanted to keep them side by side for a while, but there were a couple moments, like here with d5, and also e5, especially in the opening, where I would have benefited from that push. A3 is too cautious, I think. Bishop takes c4, queen takes c4. My position's still fine, but could have been better. Now I play this h3 move. Knight b6. Okay, so I felt a little cowardly here. And all the king's gambit purists I know are uh, begrudging me for this fact that I offered a queen trade, but... <laughs> At least it was the correct move, according to the computer, queen b5. Because i got to be a little cautious, right? Like, if I play queen back to d3, I think f5 gives black a lot of counterplay down the f-file. That's exactly the move he would like to achieve. So, at least by playing queen... Whoops, definitely not that move. At least by playing queen b5, I slow him down. And I set that little trap. If f5 here, then I've got this cool g4 reply. He can't take because he loses his queen. So, queen b5, queen g6... Good reply by black. I went g4, trying to restrict f5. It looks like I'm clinging to a narrow, narrow advantage. Black is, is super duper solid here. Anytime you have lots of pawns advanced, that opens up your position. It creates holes too. So the fact that I had uh, a bunch of pawns aligned on the fourth rank and territory as a result does not mean I can just relax here. Black has a compact formation. I have weaknesses. My king is still a question mark. I've moved the only two remaining pawns on the king side. And I'm in time pressure. So it looks like black could have improved here. Yeah, rook d8, I was criticizing that move in, my, in view of my reply, knight d5. The computer wants to reposition the knight. So knight back to d8, maybe trying to come to e6. And again, it just gives a sliver of an advantage to white. Almost nothing. Hmm. It's curious that it says knight d5 here, because that gives black the option of taking and saddling me with these triple isolated pawns. <laughs> but maybe it's hard for black to free himself, because notice that the knight has no good square to go to. It's a funny position. Yeah, I suppose if c6, I might even play rook takes e7 followed by bishop takes d6, huh? little tactic. Let's say something like this happens, white's up a pawn. So rook d8, knight d5, rook here. Now what in this position? I really wanted to go knight e3. 
I think this would be good if not for d5, but yeah, d5 scared me off. I can play knight f5 anyways here. Pawn takes, queen takes. Hmm. I thought d4 would become weak. But maybe not. Maybe the knight on f5 is worth it. Seems to be the case. So I played c4. Black played rook e8. Yeah, and now if I play this, then again, I think d5 comes to mind. Also, hmm, that's surprising. Knight e5. Wow. So trying to get the rook involved. If pawn takes, pawn takes. The rook on d7 is attacking the queen. Also, my bishop on f4 is hit. Huh. So rook e8, bishop g3. Yeah. And this is where time pressure was really taking its toll. The rest of the game, I think, was pretty sloppy for both sides. Better is rook hf1. Get the, get the rook over. Try to hide the king. Hmm. So black swapped and played knight d8. This move doesn't seem to change much. I wasn't thrilled about that move in retrospect, rook hg1. C6, good undermining move. I play queen b3. Better is queen c3, allowing the capture on d5 to occur. Again, I think the computer likes the fact that uh, black's knight is restricted when I take with the, the pawn on d5, despite the awkward-looking structure. <laughs> White is much, much better here, pawn and a half. Wow. I suppose queen c8 is a threat in this position, and that rook has nowhere to go. Also, this bishop can't move because of the hanging rook on e8. So I played queen b3, black played bishop f8, take. Now it's dynamically balanced with both sides rapidly running out of time. I'm not sure how much interest the rest of the game has. So here, d6 is hanging, but we don't want to leap at the opportunity to take it, because if I do take, rook takes e4, and I wind up with a slightly worse pawn structure, I think, isolated d-pawn, although it is a pass pawn, but... Could be vulnerable nonetheless. Still about even, even here. But I played knight d2, trying to keep my pawn structure together in the center. Now d5 was good. Hmm. d5, trying to chase the rook, I guess, to try to win this pawn. And if check, king e3. And this rook must be on the verge of being trapped, like g5 ideas in the air. Although black would have rook f5 then. So I played h4, he checked... Yeah, and he just has to shoot the knight into f4 soon, I think. He just didn't get a chance to do that. Yeah, so in the final position, black is slightly better, according to the computer. I didn't even think about taking on d5. I don't think I even saw that this pawn was hanging. I took black at his word that uh, d5 was a decent move, but looks like I should take it. I did that because it is nice to have protected pass pawns. Rook b6, okay. Yeah, I was expecting something like this, but maybe actually knight f4 runs into a king move, huh? Like king f3, and I'm winning a piece. Double attack on the knight, and black's rook is hanging. So, not too proud of this game. I don't think it was a great one on my part. I think my biggest opportunities were missed in the opening, and also with uh, my poor time management. Too much talking about the World Chess Championship and stuff. <laughs> yeah, e5 would have been a good move right here. I did not appreciate the fact that after the knight moves that I get in knight d5 with a double attack. Not only c7, but also f4, threatening to take with the knight. And just to illustrate why that's so strong, if he guards c7, then knight takes. And this queen is going to be subject to harassment. Yeah, queen h6 heads right into possible discoveries with this knight. And I would assume on queen f5, I probably have some h3, g4 idea. Oh, or bishop d3, yeah. And that's a trapped queen right there. No safe square to go to. So big missed opportunity there in the opening. Bishop takes f4. But if I play the king's gambit again, I'm going to remember this for sure. Played a little hesitantly here, but I think the damage has already been done right around this point because I had used so much time. I was just going with my first or second uh, candidate move so I didn't have much time to figure anything out and the numbers for this game I had four inaccuracies two mistakes zero blunders for a 28 average centipon loss and Pedrio had 
four inaccuracies, two mistakes for a 26 average centipon loss. So virtually neck and neck with this average centipon loss. His slightly better than mine even. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. That was uh, one of my attempts at gambit play. I will do this again. I'm trying to play more gambits, trying to play a little more aggressive in preparation for some tournaments that I have planned, especially the London Chess Classic coming up here in December. So not the best game, but stay tuned. I'm sure I'll play better ones than this. And I hope you guys learned something too. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. And I'll be back again soon with another video. Bye.